What's going on, guys, and welcome back. Freaking crazy 2023 is almost over, and with that, we now have the information about all the cards that have yet to be released in Marvel Snap. Now, we have upcoming November changes to those cards, which I haven't covered on this channel, and we also have brand new information for December, and as always, we're going to rank these cards, break them down so that you can best prepare your spotlights and start saving up, uh, especially if you're free to play. Now, guys, as always, these are data mines, right? So, uh, you know, they're subject to change, yada, yada. You guys know the drill. Let's hop into the month of November, and we start out with Miss Marvel. Obviously, the Marvels is coming out in theaters, so this is the theme of the month. Miss Marvel is a four-cost, five-power card with an insane ability of ongoing effect. Adjacent locations where your cards have unique cost have plus five power, making her technically a four-cost, 15-power card. I mean, obviously, guys, this is a pretty bonkers card. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, the stats alone, ridiculous. You play it even in one lane, and it's still a 410, which is, you know, uh, top-of-the-line stats. It's not that hard to achieve its condition, too. Like, unique cost, you know, it's somewhat not really that tough. Heck, you can just go with this Mystique and then an Onslaught, and then all of a sudden you just have, uh, what, 10 power in each lane and a good amount in the middle if you play Iron Man. It's definitely going to be beatable. There's going to be some cool decks around it, but I think this is one of the best cards out of today's video uh, alone. We're starting off with a fire one, uh, which we're starting to see in season pass cards, right? I mean, ready up the rogues, Enchantress, that will shut it down. It's like a different take on Living Tribunal, if you will. But I think Miss Marvel definitely is a character that should live up to the hype on how good she is. You know, you can Zabu her out there. Uh, obviously, Zabu would be a two-cost card affecting some of your play lines. But just play big power alongside her. Uh, I don't know. I think this one will be great. I'm going to give it a four and a half star because the stats alone scream it. I don't care if it has some obvious counters. Uh, heck, you can just put Cosmo in there. I mean, I guess Super Scroll is going to get a lot better. Either way, Miss Marvel looking fire. In order, the next card to be released is another absolute unit of a card in Gladiator. Now, guys, listen up. This is a three cost, seven power card. And check this out. On reveal... Add a card from your opponent's deck to their side, so you yank it out of the deck to this location. If it has less power, destroy it. Now, I didn't cover the early leaks on the November cards last month on this channel, but uh, he's already been tamed down, kind of like uh, Annihilus was before his release, because I'm guessing in early testing, he was probably too good, and he's still a very good damn card. I'm going to give him a four and a half stars as well. This guy has so many applications to him. You can play him in a surfer deck, obviously. Uh, and keep in mind, you can boost up this power. Remember this today as we see some of these cards that are going to have this effect. I think a common theme they're trying to do is that you're going to have these cards that are a bit overpower in their curve, but they come with like a drawback or which could be a drawback. Uh, but when it comes to Gladiator, there's so many cards you can pair with this, right? You pull it out, yank it out. If it's below seven, great, it's gone. Uh, but if it's not, then you have Shang-Chi ready to go. And you just mess up combos for pretty cheap on top of that with a stat line that's uh, the condition, I think, is much better than something like Maximus. At the same time, you can also play him into a filled location. Uh, that's clearly going to be pretty damn good. You won't pull anything from the opponent's deck. I don't know. Uh, Subterranea being in the in the match will be kind of crazy. Uh, so I do see him being mostly used in Surfer, but also just as a plug-and-play card in these Forge kind of boosted decks that we're obviously seeing a lot this season. Like the idea of playing Shuri down, then Gladiator... Uh, you pull something out, it dies no matter what. Hopefully, it's like a combo piece they needed. And then, like, Taskmaster in that, you still get 14 power, which isn't half bad. Maybe you play it in a Kitty Pride deck with the boosted stats. Gladiator is definitely going to serve a purpose in Snap. And just right off the bat, November is going to start off with a bang. Now, our next card up, if you happen to watch my Ben Brode interview, he said, this card didn't make it to the game, but here he is. He is arriving. Annihilus is a 5-cost, 8-power card. He did survive the recent changes, so I think he will be a 5-cost. On reveal, your cards with zero or less power switch sides. Destroy those that can't. I mean, look, right off the bat, I think Toxic Lovers, if you guys just watched my recent deck guide, you're going to love this card. It's one of those that are going to work with the Toxic Disrupt archetype and then also against it as like a tech card uh, against Goblins. Clearly, he's not going to want to be in like any deck. He's not a great hub card, if you will, uh, but... Man, this guy has his use with uh, clearly hazmat, with rocks that you can send with debris, the hood, uh, century. This is another dependable card with century that we can rely on. Like Viper feels really good, but kind of like not dependent. You need more cards that can do this. 
and he does this effect at a massive scale and because of that I'm gonna give him like a 3.5 four star we have to see how these all come together but I can promise you that the toxic archetype uh, you're gonna see a common theme is on the rise and as a five cost card he's a ton of fun I think he's gonna have a cool place in snap and I'm interested to see how this kind of deck works once it's all put together now lastly for the season we have martyr who was recently changed from a 2-6 down to a one cost four power card at the end of the game move to a location wait for it that loses you the game it's like the reverse captain marvel i think like a casual playing this game would be like cool i'm never getting this card uh but we have to remember this card would not be created if it didn't have a purpose I like it. I think a one cost card with better power is cool to see. And this is a good instance of cards with a drawback, good stats. You know, you can zero her right off the bat, uh, boosting her up and make it where she can't move anywhere or else it wins you the game. Uh, like Living Tribunal is going to love this because no matter what, it's good to go. Like Zudex Ultron can fill up the locations, fill all the locations. She can't move that way either. You can Venom it uh, for good. There's a lot of instances and as we've seen from, obviously, this season, Elsa Mysterio, it's not that hard to fill up all the locations. And she should fit right in there, in my opinion. I don't think she's going to be as bad as you think. She's a one-cost card. And because of that, I'll give her like a 2, 2.5 star rating. Uh, but yeah, she's going to be one that I'm sure a lot of people skip because she's not exactly, I don't know, she, she's like out to get you. So all in all, that is the month of November. I think there's some spicy cards in there that are going to help these archetypes and continue to just offer unique play and snap. Love to see it, right? Uh, I'll say the first couple of weeks are probably the best, and then you want to save. If you are looking forward to any of these new December cards I'm about to break down, moving to the holiday season to end the year, we've got four more cards, and we start with the season pass card, Sebastian Shaw. Now, this guy is kind of cool. I like it a lot. He's a three-cost three power card and when he gains permanent power he's going to gain an extra plus two power so think if forge is to boost this guy he'll get another plus two on top of that and this effect happens no matter where he is in your deck right okoye nakia think those cards hopefully okoye eventually gets an ota makes her a lot more playable uh, although she's getting some use in decks uh, nowadays uh, either way i think this card is going to slap in surfer he has a natural fit because of cards like Nova, right? Killmonger plays. Think about that. Just getting the plus one, then plus two, and then the Surfer, and then another plus two. He's going to scale like Brood, but as a single unit, I love to see it. Uh, definitely he's going to pass up that kind of uh, threshold of power that we're used to for a three-cost card, in my opinion. Forge is great to boost him up. I think we have other cards like Elsa that obviously just came out. There's more ways than one. Locations, Muir Island, Wakanda Embassy. Muir Island, you win the game. You should just snap on that. He's got a lot of practical uses, and I think he's going to be uh, like a 4.5, maybe a four-star card uh, to come out in December, and he's the season pass card uh, at that. So definitely a fun one. If you're a Surfer fan, uh, get ready. He's going to be another card to add into that mix, and uh, a simple Shadow King can shut him down. Uh, that's probably why they took him from a three-cost to a two-cost uh, Shadow King, because, uh, yeah, he'd be a little too damn good. Anyway, love the card. I think he's pretty solid. Uh, but as for our next card, we have, in my opinion, the best card in the month and probably the one I'm looking forward to the most in the months to come. We have Firestar. Now, she is a six cost, three power card on reveal. Each card you played last turn gains this card's power. Guys, I freaking love this card. In common theme, obviously, it's going to work with the season pass card, Sebastian Shaw. But God, this is like a Miracle deck in reverse. And I love Sarah Miracle. It's one of the first decks that I really learned in Marvel Snap. But you're going to be playing it the opposite, right? So clearly Zoo decks or any cards that you slam down on turn five, which if they're one cost, you can technically get five. You look at the cost, you look at the power. And not bad, right? You're going to be giving three power, not setting their power to three. That's important to know. I think a lot of people are going to read this and think, you're just going to have it in a Cerebro 3 deck because it makes every card 3 power. No, that's not how it's going to work, or at least that's not how it reads. So she's going to give uh, her power to all the cards that you played the turn before. Now think about why this could be absolutely nuts. 3 power, not bad. You can have a huge explosive uh, turn 6 finisher by only playing one card. So you kind of counter the wave thing. But this is where it gets crazy. Imagine playing this on top of Shuri. Uh, having a Koye, Nakia, Forge, any of those, uh, a simple Forge, right, is going to easily, you could play maybe for one cost if you cheat out Sarah. We'll have to see how you play this uh, deck to the fullest. But you play down a Forge, 
You play this card down. You have now plus six going to all the cards that you played on turn five. So there's so much deck theory crafting that we can do with this card. And I think it's going to be by far one of the most unique cards that come to Marvel Snap. Firestar is getting a five star, maybe a 4.5 star rating. For me personally, I think overall 4.5 stars is what people are going to see in this card. Uh, but man, Iron Lad, Wong, uh, it's just zoo decks in, in general. We saw what Mysterio and Elsa can do. I think they're going to have to do something with Mysterio because this card and that, I don't know if it can exist in the same vein. Firestar is a fire card. Next up, we have a card that has been in the data files forever. I mean, when I first started doing these data leak videos coming on a year now, he was there in that video. And at the time, his only ability was uh, he can't be moved. Well, they kept the thematicness. He still can't be moved with that ongoing ability. But on reveal, merge your deck into this card and it gains its total power. Six cost, three power card to start out. You'll consider me like the number one blob fan. I think this card is going to be fun and pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of ways to utilize this ability. On average, you have three cards left at the end of the game. So he'll, he's going to have three of these cards power into one. So decks like Hella and the Tribunal kind of blend. Or Lockjaw that wants to utilize this roulette, you know, casino system. He's got a natural home in those decks. But on top of that, guys, like Blob with Thanos, so you can, you know, just add even more power to your hand. He kind of hurts these Darkhawk style of decks that are punishing you and, and, and Black Widowing you. I think Blob, even though he's a six cost and a little awkward, if you can cheat him out and you can wave or Electro, whatever it might be, and you already have some of the cards in your hand that you need, like playing him followed by Taskmaster is something really cool. Uh, if you have Arnim Zola already, you could play him and then Arnim Zola. You're going to have this balance of just stuffing your, your deck full of big cards and then also having some synergy in there. So I don't know, man. Hella is going to be a huge home for him. I think he's a cool card, thematically perfect, and I'm a fan of Blob. I'm going to give him like a three star, maybe 3.5, uh, because he's going to create his own decks that are fun. Uh, period. They're fun. Just look out for like Gladiator or else, uh, Wolf, it, it's bad. I guess he dies, but on the way out, he takes out your entire deck. So that's just going to be a catastrophe. Either way, I'm looking forward to Blob. Now, for good reason, we're going to skip the next card. We're going to come back to that. We have Celine, though, coming out in the last week of December. And this is a unique one. Again, Toxic District fans rejoice. She's a one cost, negative one power card on reveal. Afflict the lowest power card in each power's hand with negative three power. I mean, this is all before man thing has even come out and the toxic archetype is just, it's booming. It has so many cards to come and help it and truly give it an identity in Marvel snap. Now like Luke Cage stocks, man. If you, if you, if this was stocks and you got Luke Cage back in February, dude, he has just boomed to one of the most important cards in snap. Uh, obviously destroy is going to be able to handle the toxic archetype to a degree. Uh, but man, you combine this card with man thing with a nihilist that we just talked about. Viper. And then, of course, the goblins. We're going to keep talking about these goblins. Uh, if you have a green goblin, you're going to make it now a negative six. And then you also inflict their deck. It's like a silver samurai, but it doesn't discard. It just does negative power. Pushing down on, let's say, an Iron Man. You love to see it. Uh, but on top of that, I think you can also combine this with a bunch of other interactions. Absorbing Man. She's a one cost card, which is what I like the most about her, I think. She's probably like a 2.5, maybe a 3 star because of how good she'll be in that archetype. Uh, safe side, like a 2.5 star because she's kind of narrow. But for only one cost, having her as a negative one, you annihilate everything over. She immediately has synergy in that deck. Toxic uh, has needed something to continue to push it over the limit as a great archetype. And this, combined with Manthing, combined with Annihilus, might do the trick. Now, for the last card we have to talk about today, instead of breaking it down, I'm going to give you guys just an easy... Simple to understand visual. Garbage. The Havoc is a two cost, one power card. After each turn, you lose one max energy and this card gains plus three power. So uh, I read this in one of two ways. Either you're going to be having one less energy per turn, meaning you really only have what, two energy every turn moving forward. Uh, and you're going to have to really figure out a way to capitalize that. And you have a somewhat big Havoc that can just be countered by uh, like a Shadow King. Or you just have one less power per turn, right? So on turn three, you have two power. Turn four, you have three power. Turn five, you have four power and so on. Either way, outside of like maybe playing this on turn five and making it a 2-7, which I think might work. Or you like counterplaying it with Electro, uh, maybe. 
Viper? I don't know. There's, not, there's no way this card comes out with this stat line. I don't think so, at least. And uh, if it does, then Glenn is cooking. And he knows stuff that we don't about the card. But it looks like a one-star complete garbage. This will be a skip for me. Uh, hopefully, the spotlight week is ridiculous. But all I know is this is quite possibly the worst card to ever come out in Marvel Snap. But, you know, maybe, just maybe, I'm missing something. Let me know down in the comments below. So there you go, guys. That is every card coming out in 2023. And I am pumped. I think we've got some real gems in here. And December has plenty of time to really, you know, boost up some of these trash cards that mainly just havoc uh either way we don't have any like power creep crazy you know this is gonna break marvel snap which is uh, great to see and we still have some bangers coming out in october so let me know down below what synergies did i miss what card are you looking forward to the most i'll be having a uh, video come out about the spotlights here shortly uh but either way guys hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you don't want to miss any video in the future and you want to help support uh, as we come up on a year of marvel snap and really the channel, which is crazy to think about, uh, subscribe down below. You guys have a good one and good luck there in the new season. And until the next one, happy snapping.